playing for the Hunters, it means so much to me. As a kid growing up, seeing your idol playing for the Hunters and thinking that one day uh, you wanted to go and play for this club. I'm honored. It's a big honor for me to take part in the Hunters. The Panji Hunters are a rugby league team. They compete in the Queensland State competition here, which is one grade below the NRL. We have everyone from all different regions of Papua New Guinea being united under one banner, which is the Hunters, and we turn up week in, week out, representing our nation. Rugby league is a national sport of Papua New Guinea. Uh, so the players are extremely proud uh, to be playing this sport and representing their families and their cultures back home. I do my best in footies. So my family, you know, they take the pride and they'll be like happy. Most of our players coming through the Digicel Cup competition, which is a semi-professional league in Papua New Guinea. We're coming up against full-time NRL players, so it's a bit of a challenge for our guys. We have to teach them all different systems, uh, defensive systems and how we want to attack. So once players are in the Hunter system, there's a number of directions in which they can go. Uh, ideally, it's, it's towards the NRL. Our job is to get these guys to that next level. At times, it's a, it's a world away from how these guys live and how they grow up. A lot of the boys have come out of the village, and we have, when they come into camp in Port Moresby, we, some of these guys we have to teach to use technology, like uh, turn on a TV. There are obviously cultural challenges when you relocate to another country. In PNG, we just uh, open to any bus at any time, where one will go. But in here, you have to do everything on time, wait for bus on time. The weirdest, I think, the first time we came here, we had like pasta for two straight weeks. But well, back home, we didn't have pasta. People are so cautious about their time and how they utilize their time to the best of their own abilities. Something back home, which uh, <laughs> we meet someone and that's it. We can stand for an hour and just chat in on everything that we can think of. So yeah, a bit different, but it's something that we can learn from also. <laughs> The goal of, of the SP PNG Hunters is really to provide a legitimate pathway for rugby league players coming out of Papua New Guinea uh, and into the NRL. Everyone wants to play for NRL. My aim is to you know, look for uh, NRL contract. It's certainly my belief that PNG should be a production line. And if we could flood PNG with quality coaching, then you know that's the blueprint towards us being a dominant power in the national or international scene, sorry. Justin Ollum, uh, who plays centre for the Melbourne Storm, uh, he's a prime example of, of someone who was picked up through the Digicel Cup competition, played a season with the Hunters, uh, and very quickly found himself with an NRL contract. Growing up, you watch players play on NRL, and it'll hit you every time you go to bed that you want to be there at the highest level possible. Oh, it's just great to see. So exciting. So much talent throughout that PNG side. Dean, any particular names that are coming through the ranks that you've spotted? Oh, none, none that I've, I've spotted in there. So I've, I've, I mentioned uh, Solo Wayne before, yeah. uh, how much he's impressed me as mm -hmm. a winger. But um, you heard about Justin Olam there and the, yeah. the path that he took. He actually played for the national team before he represented the, the Hunters. So um, he was already on, on the path, but mm -hmm. then got picked up by Melbourne is a grand final winner and no doubt is a, a really good role model to a lot of young people playing the game back in, in PNG. So you're right, is it really exciting for, for them to have that team in the Queensland Cup? Yeah, it certainly is. And Kiana, have you come across any particular players, anyone that comes to mind that's played for, for PNG or a PNG player that um, is just someone that you don't want to come across when you're on the field? <laughs> yes, 100%. Um, <laughs> Elsie Albert, she's <laughs> an absolute beast on the field. We came up against her not long ago yeah. um, and she's just 
yeah, she's someone that you want on your team. You don't want to be playing against them. Yeah. And she, as you know, she just carved us up the other day, just yeah. running through us. She's just so strong. Um, hard to stop, so yeah. Yeah, and they're the type of athletes that PNG produce, hey Sam, is just those strong, dense, hard running, um, smart players from PNG. I just seeing them, they haven't got that high performance, but how shredded they are. Like, yeah. it's, they're massive. Yeah. You know, it's just they're, obviously they've got all the um, attributes to be, you know, talented athletes, it's gifted. Uh, but it was actually interesting to hear those little off field things just around, you know, yeah. eating pasta for a little bit, the scheduling. Yeah. I was talking to, when I was with the uh, the drawer squad, their coaching staff, their scheduling. You know, we take it for schedule. Here's your, here's a paper. Here's a day off. Mm -hmm. Here's when we eat. Some of them didn't turn up to training because they read the old schedule. Didn't realise they had to uh, on the app, you know, click on the new date or new week. Oh. So that was still just going off the the week before and the the day off changed and a few yeah. players just didn't show up. And they yeah. asked, "Where were you?" And they were like, going, "It was a day off." And they're like, <laughs> "No, that was last week." And then they were just like, "Oh, sorry." And then just. That was it. Play on. <laughs> Play yeah. on, you know. If that was us, what was the fine for um, that when we were playing 100 uh, yeah. fine or burpees <laughs> or something? But Your physical, physical yeah. punishment, yeah. Yeah. yeah just what, you know, that's the stuff that I, I love to see and talk about the pathway. It's that off-field stuff, learning to be a professional athlete away from the game as well as looking after your performance on it. Yeah, certainly. And it's so interesting, isn't it? Like, from being from Australia and being in those pathways in Australia, we never really, they were already established. You never yeah. really had to think about it. It's coming through the ranks, that's what you're exposed to. But for these players coming from the islands, they're not exposed to that kind of structure and, yeah. you know, that next level of professionalism where they're on a schedule and they're being fed properly, you know, what athletes usually eat and yeah. they don't have time to stand there and have a yarn for two, three hours <laughs> at a time when you run into a yeah. friend. You're on a tight schedule. So it is really interesting mm. and eye-opening to see um, those particular challenges that they face coming from the islands. Yeah.